Oh, welcome back. So in this uh, series of the video lectures on data communication, uh, this is the eighth uh, lecture. And in this, uh, we are going to continue our discussion on uh, digital signals. So in the previous lecture, we took uh, a periodic digital signal. Right, a digital signal which is periodic. Right, and we applied Fourier transform to this digital signal. And we observed that when we apply the Fourier transform on this digital signal, we get the spectrum. Right, and there are frequency components at f, 3f, 5f, and so on. So, if I combine these firm, uh, harmonics, we can get the square. Okay, so with this idea, in this lecture, we are going to discuss on the topics, what is known as baseband transmission. We will understand what you mean by baseband and what is the transmission of baseband signal. Then we will explain or we will uh, we will also discuss on uh, what is called as wide band and narrow band fine baseband transmission okay so we are going to look at baseband then we will define what is a broadband transmission, right? We are going to learn very interesting concept in this uh, class that we will take this channel as a low pass filter. low pass filter. First, let us uh, tell, uh, let me tell you what is this low pass filter. So a low pass filter is having this kind of response. So if you plot frequency and the magnitude, right, this filter is going to pass all the frequencies from zero to some cutoff frequency. Okay, so let me call that as FC. So all these frequencies are transferred through the filter without any attenuation. It means if I take this as a medium, like a wire or something, okay, some medium. It means that if I inject the signal into this medium, okay, then the signals that I receive at the end will only be received, okay, only those frequencies will be received who are there, who are within this limit, right? So beyond these cutoff frequencies, the information or the signal will not be transferred through this medium. So that's what the low pass filter is. Fine. So with this idea, let us start with our baseband transmission. Right? So I'm talking about now baseband. It means 
If I am transferring these frequencies, they are called as, I mean, from 0 to Fc, they are called as baseband. Okay, so I am injecting a data into my channel. So I'll refer to this figure again. Right, so we are injecting right, a square wave. That is our objective here. We have to transfer this digital signal. Right, and we have seen that this digital signal is having this following frequencies, right? So the very the fundamental frequency, uh, harmonic something like 3, 5, 3F, 5F, and so on. Right? So we have this medium. If this medium is able to transfer maximum number of harmonics, right? More number of harmonics, okay? Then the received signal waveform will be like this. So if I am, if my channel is transferring many number of harmonics, not just one or two, it means uh, like I have 5F, 9F, 13F, 11F, 13F, then I can expect my output signals to look something like this slightly distorted, right? Now, if I take any, another case, where only few frequency components are, uh, I know we can only transmit, only few, might be like F and 3F, something like this. Then we will not be able to exactly get the same waveform. So instead, we may get some distorted waveform like this. Right? So the first case, what we see here, is called as wideband transmission. Right? So if I take the response of this filter, it can transfer many number of frequencies. If my channel could not transfer all the frequencies, only limited. Some frequency of FC, okay, very small frequencies, then we call this as narrow band filters. And the definition of the narrow band will allow us to uh, take more discussion of this concept. Right. So, what do you mean by this? Let us assume that I am transferring some n number of bits. Right. And in order to relate it with the bandwidth, so that's what the wide band and narrow band. So, that's the bandwidth of this filter. Right. So, we can call this as a bandwidth, the range of frequencies which it can transmit without, uh, with the minimum attribution. So, what is the number of bits is there? I mean, if I take n as my bit rate, okay, so this we defined in our previous class, number of bits in one second. Okay, so if I'm having some bit rate, what is the relationship with the bandwidth? Can we, can we identify some relationship? Right? Can we do some approximation here? And that is what we are going to discuss. <clears throat> right? So for this, okay, so I will repeat it. What, what is the point here? So we have identified the difference between wideband and narrow band, right? So in the wide band, the range of frequencies that we can transfer will be very high. That is the bandwidth is very high. Whereas in a narrow band, the bandwidth is very small. So a very small number of frequencies that we can send. So we need to find some relationship or we need to see that while we are discussing with the narrow band, uh, what kind of medium that we need to use. So we are going to try to find some relationship between the bandwidth and the bit rate. 
So let's see that. So we call this as uh, in the textbook this approximation. Right? So some approximation we need to find out. Okay, so let us see. So the objective is to find the relationship between bandwidth, okay, to the bit rate, number of bits that are there in a, in one second. So this we need to find, and we also need to prove this that the bandwidth re required is n by two. So if I'm using 100 BPS, uh, so then the bandwidth we need is half of that in terms of hertz. That is the number of cycles needed to represent that number of bits. So let's see that how, how this uh, uh, relationship has appeared. So I'm taking eight cases here. First case is I'm having three bits. And the second case is I'm having three bits with 0, 0, 001. So let me let me write it down. So 0010, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Right? So what I'm doing, what we are trying to learn here, the relationship between the bit rate, number of bits, and this, and the bandwidth. So if I'm using, if I'm transmitting, sorry, not using, if I'm transmitting 0, 0, 0 in, in one second, so we can see that I don't need any frequencies. So I can send this as f equals 0. Right? I don't need any uh, frequencies to be sent here. Okay, so this is one case. So for this, let me draw some reference. Okay, so I'll take some reference line so that we can clearly understand. Right. So let me draw this. So whenever I'm seeing a zero, I will just uh, send some negative voltage here. Fine. Now we have again a zero here. So I need to put a sine wave to use this, right? So we don't have any uh, once here, so I get this. Now I'm having a zero here, and we have a one. So we have now a sine wave like this, right? So what is the frequency that we are having now? The frequency that we observe here is there are half cycle with two bits. Okay, one and a half cycle with the three bits. It means this, I can write it as n by 4, right? So the number of frequencies. So if I take it as one full cycle, then there should be appearing four bits. So number of the frequency uh, with the, the bit rate, we can relate it as n by 4. Now in this case, I'm having 0. I'll put a positive cycle 1 and again a 0 here. So the number of the relationship between F and N in this case will be seen in two bits, we are using one cycle. So it means that we should have it as N by two. So similarly, we can see here, I'll get it like this. So here also, we have similar case with this. So we have this as, n by 4. Okay, hope you are hope you are getting this idea. Now, if I come to this, I'll be having this. So f is again n by 4. Here, 
it is f equals n by 2. And again, f equals n by 4. And there is no frequency because all are ones. So we don't see any variation. So what is the range we are seeing? So let me plot that spectrum. So what we are seeing here is one component. So this is my ref at f equals zero. There is one more component at f equals n by two. And there is, sorry, n by four. And we have one more at f equals n by two. So the bandwidth is a range, right? It is a range of frequencies. So the bandwidth we are having is, so this, the upper value minus the lower, that is FH minus FL, here FH is N by two, FL is zero, the lower level. So we will get this as N by two, right? So what is the significance of this discussion? It means that if I take more number of harmonics, right? So if I take my harmonics as this is just for f. So if I if I take it for uh, three times of n by two, and if I take it with five terms of n by two, right? So I am instead of selecting just one harmonic, I increase this. What is happening with this is I require more and more bandwidth, right? The channel bandwidth should be will also increase. So what, what actually it means is, if you want to send the data at a higher rate, then you should have a larger bandwidth so that the signal will not get attenuated. So that is a, the point that we have to understand. You know, if it is a wide band case, no problem. If it is transmitting all the signals, but when it is in a narrow band, so the kind of the channel, the medium that we are using to transfer is very crucial because as you take more and more harmonics, I mean, more and more data rate you want to transfer, then you need to have the higher bandwidth. So that is what uh, we have to understand. Okay, so let me take one example in the textbook. Okay, so the problem is, so I'll write the problem. What is, the required bandwidth right required bandwidth of a so since the channel is modeled as a low pass we can call now this as a low pass channel of a low pass channel if we need if we need to send 1 mbps so the requirement is uh, we need to send 1 megabits in one uh, in one per second okay by using by using baseband transmission. This is the problem. Okay, we are taking one exercise here. Okay, so the now we have this data rate as, now the data rate what we have is, the data rate we are having is one Mbps. Right? So if I take with the minimum band, that is only one harmonic. So we can write this as n by two, right? So this will be one, 10 to the power of six by two. So somewhere around 500 into 10 to the power of three is what we are going to get, right? So that is the Hertz. So I can write this as 500 kilohertz. So this is the bandwidth required in order to uh, transmit the data. 
Now, if I consider the second half, that is three times of n. Right. So we are uh, taking it as three times of two. So this is three into n by two. We have already computed. So we are having five hundred. So this will come around. 1.5 megahertz. Right. So, what the example or the discussion we did uh, that we can understand through this example. Now, this is what we all uh, we are discussing about the baseband transmission. Right. Now, what happens in uh, communication is we are having a source. Right that is generating this data to be transferred. If this is source is directly connected to some receiver called that as a sync. So some receiver is there. So I'll call this as a transmitter and receiver. They are connected using a dedicated line. And this dedicated line might be transferring 1.5 megahertz channel is there. It can accommodate the bandwidth. So I can put my uh, given data rate here comfortably uh, transmitted. No problem. I will be receiving this signal. Now, if this medium is shared by many users, okay, not just between two points. So now I'm having a case that they need, there are many users who want to, who are, who are sharing this same bandwidth, the same channel. Then we cannot proceed with the base band because that will cause an interference. All are transmitting at the same frequencies, so that will cause an interference. Now we need to move the user's data to different range of frequencies. One uh, user will be using the range somewhere between this F2 to F2 to F1. So this, between this bandwidth, there is some other user who is using between F3 to, to F4. That is what we see in our uh, telecommunications also, like example of the AM radio. One station is working at 93.5, another station working at 98.5 megahertz, kilohertz, something like that. That is your uh, central frequencies, right? So uh, you, you can uh, observe that you are, you are talking something like a modulation. So this is called as broadband transmission. So if I am uh, going for modulated, you know, you are shifting uh, your data, which is there somewhere between zero to FC, you are shifting it to a new band, right? So between F, uh, let me call this as FL and FH, right? So this is, this is the, what we call as a modulation process. And this kind of transmission is referred to as broadband transmission. Okay. We will take the exercise problem later. Okay. So now we have talked about the communication. Now is the communication uh, are having some problems? Yes. So we call them as transmission impairments. So during communication, there might be uh, there are some problems that we see. So let us see that. What is this transmission? Oh, I'm sorry. Transmission impairment. So generally, three uh, types of impairments are observed. One is attenuation. Right. And the second case is distortion. And third is noise, right? So attenuation means, so let us see what is attenuation. Okay, so we have a medium and we are transmitting a signal with some power, let's call this as P in, and we receive some signal at the output, some 
signal or information is received with some power p out. Now the ratio of this, this attenuation is the measurement, right? That how much power we have transmitted, received to the power that is being transmitted. So if I am if I am transmitting something like 10 watts, right? Just, just an example. And if I'm receiving only one watt, so it has been attenuated, right? So instead of receiving 10 watts, I'm only receiving the attenuation, uh, only receiving the one watt. So this is called attenuation. There are many reasons why this attenuation causes because of the channel characteristics itself, right? Because as the uh, length of the channel increases, there is a characteristics for this channel because of the physics of the channel itself. For every meter, we observe that there is a, a fall in the signal strength. So that is also, that is the measurement we call it as dB meter, okay? So what do you mean by this decibels? So the dB stands for decibels. So it is given as log base 10 halves, okay? So this, if I if I represent the attenuation, so we are representing this attenuation in terms of decibels. Okay, this is ten log base ten half p out divided by p. So this is in terms of decibels. Okay, so this is what we call attenuation. And uh, the second kind of impairment that we see, right, is called distortion. Distortion. Again, the same thing, no? We are transmitting a signal through a medium, right, with certain shape. Right, but at the receiver, okay, the shape doesn't look proper. So it could have, it has got distorted. So this is what we call it as also a distortion. <clears throat> and the third one is noise. Okay, it means we have received, we have transmitting some signal. So let's call this as signal power. So I'll call this as SP. Signal is being transmitted uh, with some signal power. And because of the characteristics in the channel, that is heat generated in the channel, a noise will be introduced that will also result into some distortion of the shape. So we are adding up with some noise. Right? So let's call this power, which is adding to this channel as <clears throat> then the ratio, a very interesting ratio we will obtain, which is called SNR, signal to noise ratio. Signal power divided by the noise power. So this is generally very popularly, we will call this as SNR. Fine. So we observe four kind of, uh, I mean, three kinds of transmission impairments. To understand more, so let me take one example about uh, no SNR attenuation. We'll take one problem. Okay, so that we can understand it better. So this is a case we are having here. So we are transmitting at some point, let's call this as point one. So here, this is where I'm injecting the signal. And there is a transmission medium, the wire that is being dead. And I will use some circuitry here, which will amplify this signal. Okay, so I'll write it as AMP, so the amplifier. And again, there is a one more transmission. So I'm having three pieces segments here. Okay, physical connection. So it is like 
I'm having a wire, then it connects to a repeater, and then again I'm having a wire. So this repeater is amplified. So here in between these two, the attenuation is represented by decibels, right? So if I'm having the power output power less than the input power, then the log should give me the minus here. Whereas in this case, the amplifier will give me some 7 dB. So it is not attenuating. Instead, we are amplifying the signal. And at the other side, the last section, we have again a minus 3 dB attenuation. Okay. So I'm injecting a signal at point 1. And I want to receive the signal at some point. Okay. So at these two points, between these two points, there are three column segments. Two transmission lines, one here and one here. And in between these two transmission lines, for some reason, we have used a amplifier, a repeater. So this hardware component is called as a repeater. Now, what is the attenuation at the point two? Okay, so we want to find out that what is the total attenuation, of, what is the attenuation of the receiver. So I'm going to see, since I'm using it decibels, the, the log term is there. So I'm going to add these three values, right? So I'm having one decibel. But it means that instead of the signal getting attenuated, because of use of this segment, this segment with the hardware that is amplifying, we are observing that there is a gain in the power. So we call this as a gain. Why? Because the value is, the sign is positive. Fine, that's why I call it as a gain. Here, by value of minus 3 dB, it is attenuated. Whereas here, it is gained, I know, by 7 dB, we are amplifying it. Fine. And finally, the transmission wire is getting attenuated. Okay, so I have to give a small exercise for you. So if I am injecting 10 milliwatts of power at point one, what is the P2 here? Let me call this as P2. What is the power here at this point? What is the power that you are measuring at this point? Please do the calculations and uh, uh, we can cross check it also. So I want all of you, the students, to uh, compute it. Okay. Okay. Let's take one more case about SNR noise. So we are discussing on SNR. Fine. So we have a signal power that is being transmitted. Let's call this as SP, right? I'm transmitting again, 10 milliwatts of power. And the noise power is somewhere around one milliwatt. Okay. Okay, let me make it a bit complex. Instead of unit as a watt, I will be using voltage. Okay, so the signal power that I'm injecting, the signal voltage strength is 10 millivolts, whereas the noise is 1 millivolt. Tell me what is the value of SNR in decibels? So we need to compute this. So we have this basic definition of power when I'm using power. So here it is not power. So yeah, the notation we are confused with. Let me, let me write this as voltage. What is the base, what we defined just now, we discussed with respect to the power, right? So SP by NP. So here the P stands for power. So what we are given with the voltage. Right, the square of that voltage is a power, right? So I will get this as 20 log 
base 10. So here I have forgotten 10. So I'll write it as SV by NP. So compute this, you'll get some value. So 20 log base 10 now. 10 millivolts, 10 to the power of minus 3. So some value you are going to get. Okay. Now I would like to give you an exercise problem. I'm having an SNR in decibels. Okay. I'm writing in terms of decibels as minus 10 B. You assume, assume the signal power you okay. Uh, we, you assume that the signal power is unit. Okay. What is the noise? Please compute this. These are very interesting observations that you are going to make when you find those numbers. So we are transmitting one watt uh, and the, uh, the communication uh, is having these characteristics of SNR as minus uh, 10 dB. And you give me, uh, you compute the, the power in the noise, right? So what we have understood uh, from this class is about the channel. The channel is a low pass filter. And uh, when we want to share the medium with different users, we cannot go with the baseband transmission. We have to go with the broadband transmission. And we also discussed upon uh, uh, the idea of the approximation in narrowband uh, baseband transmission. And we see the three kinds of transmission impairments, that is noise, distortion, and attenuation. We took, did some examples to uh, get more insight on these terms, right? So in the, uh, so we will end this class uh, with this and continue in the next class, we will uh, discuss upon two very, another very interesting concepts of digital communications that is uh, Nyquist data rate, Nyquist data rate or Nyquist channel. And the another one is with the Shannon channel capacity. And uh, we will solve some exercise again there also to understand more uh, about those concepts. So thank you very much.